Think British luxury cars of the 1980s, and one of the first and most commonly thought of cars is this, the Bentley Turbo R, and with very good reason. The Turbo R took the same comfort and luxury and opulence that we were used to from Rolls and Bentleys and added a little hint of menace, an almighty turn of speed and remarkable handling and road holding ability. An instant classic and one of our very favourites here at Classics World. However, some would argue that a true luxury car shouldn't care one jot about performance or road holding or handling. It should be all about the wafting, the relaxation, the comfort and the sheer peace that you get from them. And if that's the case, those same people would probably argue you'd be better off with the car that spawned the Turbo R, the Rolls-Royce Silver Spirit. With both of these cars well into classic territory and worth about the same money these days, we've brought our Project Turbo R together with this immaculate example of a Silver Spirit to find out which is best and which one you should buy. Believe it or not, sometimes Rolls-Royce find themselves in trouble. Sometimes it's financial trouble, and other times it's just knowing what to do next. The Silver Shadow was an enormous gamble for Rolls-Royce. Not only was it their first monocoque car and smaller than the car that it was replacing, but it was an enormous financial gamble to develop a whole new model from the ground up for them. But it was a gamble that paid off. The Silver Shadow was an enormous success for Rolls-Royce. It went on to be their best-selling car ever, and millionaires the world over were keen to be seen in one. But come the end of the 1970s, the Shadow was a bit long in the tooth, and really it needed replacing. But despite the Shadow's enormous success, Rolls-Royce still didn't really have enough money to develop another whole new ground-up model. So whatever was going to succeed the Shadow would be based on its architecture. And therein lies a problem. You see, to be successful in the lucrative American luxury car market, where bigger is better, Rolls-Royce needed to be seen to be offering more. So they employed a number of clever styling techniques on what became the Silver Spirit to make the car appear bigger. You'll notice those wide horizontal headlights, the wide tail lights. The radiator grille is shorter but wider than it was on the Shadow to make the car look wider. It's all in the name of making the Spirit look like a bigger car than it actually is. And it works! Look at a Rolls-Royce Silver Spirit in isolation and it looks like a massive car. And being based on the Shadow, the Spirit also used its mechanicals. The same 6 and 3 quarter litre L-Series V8 engine, the same 3-speed General Motors automatic gearbox and the same adequate 230-ish horsepower. Now the Spirit isn't that much bigger or heavier than the Shadow so there's not that much more to cart around but still progress is best described as dignified. Certainly it will gather pace if you put your foot down but I think gathering pace is actually probably the most appropriate way to describe it but fitting your refined luxury car with an L-Series V8 is a pretty good start. That engine is so smooth, you can barely feel any vibrations under acceleration and when you sat idling you'd be forgiven for thinking it wasn't even turned on. And you can enjoy that silky smooth power plant with the same Citroen derived hydro pneumatic suspension that you've got in the shadow. Only this time it's got automatic hydraulic ride control and pressurised gas shock absorbers. All in the name of keeping the car more level when you're going over bumps and keeping it more composed when you're going around corners. And it works! The Silver Spirit has got that same wafty, floaty ride that the Shadow did, but it's so much more composed doing it. I'm still uber comfortable and really relaxed, but I know what the front wheels are doing. The car doesn't immediately pitch and roll if you've got a side wind, and it does keep its composure even on the heaviest and largest of bumps. It's the same wafty Rolls-Royce experience, but now just a little bit more refined and a bit more modern. And the same could be said of the interior. This is still the same opulent Rolls-Royce cabin. I've still got plenty of wood, plenty of chrome, and plenty of lovely soft leather. But the dashboard is more curved, the fascia is more rounded. And on early spirits, where there used to be analog gauges on the dashboard of the Shadow, you've got LCD screens. Now that turned out to be a little bit too radical for Rolls-Royce's traditional customer base, adding the fact that the screen ones only really had a shelf life of a couple of years from new, and that was an easy decision to go back on in later spirits. You could make the case that it's not as classically beautiful as the Silver Shadow, and I'll probably agree with you. But as a luxury car to actually use on a regular basis, 
the Spirit is far superior. It's a far easier car to drive and to live with. The Spirit was a success. It sold 19,000 units over its life. Now granted, that's not an enormous number compared to pretty much any other car company, but it still remains a huge number for a car company charging twice what the Germans were charging for their luxury saloons. The only problem the Silver Spirit had were those German rivals. You had the Mercedes S-Class and the BMW 7 Series proving that you could have a wafty, comfortable luxury car, but also sports car level performance and handling. And the Spirit, for as much as it is a more composed, more drivable car than the Silver Shadow, still is really rather a car to be driven in than to be driven. The good news is, Crew had a secret weapon. Fortune favours the brave, so they say. And it was a very brave man, Rolls-Royce boss David Plasto to be exact, who looked at the soft, comfortable Silver Spirit, itself based on a 1960s Silver Shadow, and thought, hmm, wonder if we can make that fast. Apparently Plasto went into his engineering team and said, let's have a bit of a play with those new turbochargers. So they took an old Silver Shadow development car and sent it away to broad speed, asking them to strap a Garrett T4 to the side of the six and three quarters V8. The resulting car was something of a hot rod. It was a bit unruly, but it was huge fun. Everyone that drove it said it was fantastic. The reception was so positive, in fact, that management decided a turbocharged production car would be coming out of crew and it would be wearing a Bentley badge. Partly that would differentiate it from the Silver Spirit and partly because the sportiness of adding turbocharging is kind of more in keeping with Bentley's history of winning Le Mans and its general motorsport ethos. The first car to leave crew with a turbocharger on it was the Mulsanne Turbo, but much like that early Silver Shadow development car, it didn't have a great deal done to the chassis and that meant that it was fast, but unruly. Management responded by saying to the engineering team, take the Mulsanne Turbo and make it 50% stiffer. Anti-roll bar rates were increased 60% at the rear and 100% at the front. The spring rates all round were doubled and there was a pan hard rod added to locate and anchor the rear subframe during high speed cornering. The quad headlights of old made a return and there was a nice deep chin spoiler added. Throw all these things together and the result was the Bentley Turbo R. Finally a car from crew that could utilize that turbocharged power and what power it was. In fuel injected guys, the Turbo R like this makes around 330 horsepower. Not to mention, it's making 450 pounds feet of torque. You've only got to lean on the throttle and the Turbo R just takes off. But because it's so torquey, it's not an old school RS Turbo-esque kick in the head. It's more of a satisfying surge of power. But for as impressive as the performance is, and it is mightily impressive, that's not the best thing about the Turbo R. The best thing is the way it gets it down to the ground. This is still a big, heavy luxury limousine, and yet it corners far better than it has any right to. You've got a lot of lean going on, partly because of the soft suspension and partly because of the tall tyre sidewall, but it will hang on long after most drivers have run out of courage. You can hustle this thing at phenomenal speeds cross country and it just grips. In some ways the Bentley isn't as gentlemanly as the Rolls Royce is. It is noisier, it isn't quite as elegant to look at and if you're being really nitpicky it maybe doesn't ride quite as well as the Silver Spirit. But that's the whole point of it. A Bentley isn't supposed to be the same level of grace and elegance and comfort as a Rolls Royce. It's supposed to offer you the same level of luxury and with the sense that you could waft all the way to Le Mans, win it and then drive home again. And the Turbo R really does deliver that. It's arguably the less perfect car in some ways. Because you're traveling faster, you're gonna hear more wind noise. Some Rolls-Royce people would say that the Bentley has a certain inelegance by comparison. But honestly, take one drive out in the Turbo R, let it fly, and all is forgiven. Well, I can think of worse ways to spend an afternoon than waffling around in two of Crew's finest. But which one of these two is the finer of the pair? 
the Silver Spirit is a fantastic car. It's a great evolution of the Silver Shadow. It looks and feels more modern inside and out. And if you want to use it on the regular, the Spirit is arguably a better car than the Shadow. Not to mention, like for like, it's about half the price these days. However, the Turbo R has got more sense of occasion about it. It's a bit noisier, it's way faster as we've said, and the cornering ability is frankly remarkable. The faster you go, the more you notice the flaws in this aging platform, you notice a few more squeaks and rattles, and you do hear more wind noise, but it's also more fun, it's more enjoyable, it's more of an endearing character of a car. The Silver Spirit is a fantastic classic, and we wouldn't blame you for buying one, but for me, it's the Turbo R every single time.